All right. Hello, sports fans and baseball fans out there. It is Sportsman Z, and I'm back with my main man, Chris Dufour. And today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame ballot and who we think should be voted into the Hall of Fame. And um, then, of course, as you know, this uh, recording is going up on the 24th. And so tomorrow will be the actual announcement of who got in. And we will see just how accurate Chris and I are with our predictions. But in case you do not know what the ballot looks like, here it is. All right, so for everybody out there, let me just move myself up here. Here is the Hall of Fame ballot. Um, this is one of the writer's ballots. I uh, whited out all of the check boxes just so that um, there, you weren't influenced or didn't have um, any idea who, the, um, who this person picked. But this was one of the ballots online that somebody shared, one of the voters shared. And so you can see all of the eligible people uh, for the Hall of Fame that are on the ballot this year. And um, we, uh, Chris Dufour and I, are going to discuss who on this list we believe belongs in the Hall of Fame or, and or who we would have voted for uh, this particular year. And then... Um, I welcome your comments below on our picks, what your picks would be, who you would definitely leave off. I'm just going to give you another second or two here to take a look at this ballot so that you know who is on it. And I may or may not, in the editing phase, run the names across the bottom of the screen. But just so you know who is on the um, ballot here, take a good look. And then we will get on with the discussion for uh, Chris and I discussing who we think we would have voted for had we had a vote. So that is the ballot. I will run the um, names across the screen um, or something just to re refresh your memory. But um, I would love to hear from you guys. While we're uh, having this discussion in the uh, comments below, who you think should be in the, hall, in the Hall of Fame, who should be voted in uh, this year, and who should definitely not, if you want to comment on that. But I, with that, I will kick it off to Chris to uh, do whatever comments, say whatever comments he wants before we get started. Whatever comments I want before we get started, all right? That's exciting. It's a whole uh, carte blanche approach to uh, Sportsman Z. Uh, no, this is great. I love the Hall of Fame. So as people may have uh, witnessed a few years ago when we did that Dwight Evans, please make the Hall of Fame video. And uh, so this is great. This is, uh, this is Bonds, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and Sammy Sosa, for that matter, their last year on the ballot because you get 10 years on the ballot, and this is their 10th. And Schilling, too. None of them will, will likely be voted in. That's a diff. you know, we'll talk about that after we, we can tell everybody who we're voting for because who we vote for doesn't really matter, and then we can talk about who's actually going to get in. <laughs> right. Totally different story. Uh, so where do you want to start? There's 30 names on the ballot. And uh, like I mentioned, the four four guys that are have the are in their tenth year, and then oh. uh, some guys, uh, some new guys uh, are David Ortiz and Alex Rodriguez. They're uh, love them. Yeah, <laughs> they're on the ballot for the first time. So yes, they're, they're um, and you can pick up the ten. But I have actually I increased mine by one. I before in a previous video I said that I would pick six, but I actually increase that to seven so i wow you have seven picks on my card and i am going to start off by saying that one of my uh picks is well you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say two of them right here i'm gonna say, say two right now i'm gonna say barry bonds and clemens because bonds and clemens. 
It's their last year on the ballot, and I do not care as much about um, allegations of or the actuality of um, using um, performance-enhancing drugs. So I would say they need to be in. And in fact, really, in both of their cases, I believe even had they not used the performance-enhancing drugs or... In Bonds' case, even before he started, he had statistics that probably would have put him in the Hall of Fame anyway. I mean, that's that's the argument, right? I mean, there's no right answer to this uh, how you approach your vote with uh, steroids or not. You're either, some people are totally against steroids. Some people try to make differentiations and, you, and take each case individually. And some people just... Uh, want to just forget about it and and vote these guys in. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're right. I mean, I mean, Bonds and Clemens were all time greats, super incredible stats and accomplishments. Seven Cy Youngs for Clemens, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, near and dear to my heart. Eighty six, eighty eight, ninety, ninety one, three. You know, uh, so he's a great pitcher before he left the Red Sox, which was 96. He was on the Red Sox in 96, and the Blue Jays went to the Blue Jays in 97. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, I'm certainly not upset that you voted for him. I, uh, I probably will vote for them as well, I think. I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't actually – I was – filled out my ballot so I want to I don't know if I'm going to go over 10 or not so if we get to if I'm at the point where I'm over 10 I might take those two back off but uh, for now in this Ooh. conversation I'm going to share that sentiment and I, do. I don't have room for people that did drugs so let's get them out. I might push them off you know we'll see I'm uh, I'm definitely uh, on a slippery slope with the steroids people but uh you know, right. I, it, it is my belief that there are already people in the Hall of Fame that did steroids, maybe not consistently, but tried them at least, you know. So you were talking about a pitcher on your team, and that is Roger Clemens. I'm going to talk yes. about a pitcher on my team, and that I'm is going to Mark. guess you're going to say Mark Burley. Mark Burley. Yeah. But no, no, I don't, I don't think Mark Burley should get I think his statistics – our borderline, he had a 59.1 lifetime war, uh, 214 wins, and he did have a perfect game. Um, but, um, you know, if you compare him to somebody, another left-handed pitcher who is in the Hall of Fame, Steve Carlton. Carlton had a 90.2 war, and he uh, had 329 wins. So... Um, I think it's a high bar to get into the Hall of Fame, and I just don't think Burley quite makes that bar. I mean, I'm not so worried about the wins because Carlton and Burley pitched in completely different eras when it comes to wins and and how uh, bullpens were used and how long starting pitchers pitched. Um, for me, Burley's ERA is 3.81 and his whip is 1.28. And neither of those reach the Hall of Fame standard. For me, they're very good. And certainly for the area he pitched in, they're good. And especially for a left-hander, they're good. Very good. But uh, I think they're just, like you said, I, I, I think they're a little short of Hall of Fame standard. But the win, the 214 wins, I'm fine with. That's You're not going to get many people with more than that anymore. So, Right. So... Um, but, yeah, we both agree Burley is um, not quite to the standard of the Hall of Fame. A very good. Yeah, I mean, he, pit, he pitched 16 years in the majors and won 214 games. That's that's good. All right. Yeah. It is. It is. So. In this day and age, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a real good. That's a solid number. All right. Um, so um, I'm going to throw it back to you. Why don't you give us somebody either that you believe should be voted in or that you believe definitely should not, either one, and we can discuss it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're going to go through all 30 names. That would take forever. So uh, <laughs> I'll just say uh, guys that are in the uh, Burley – I mean, a, a lot of guys on this list are close, right, but not quite. So I'm not voting for Carl Crawford. I'm not voting for Prince Fielder. 
Ryan Howard doesn't quite make it for me. Tim Hudson, uh, Tory Hunter, Bobby Abreu, Justin Morneau, uh, Joe Nathan, Jonathan Papelbon, Jake Peavy, AJ Przinsky. Those are uh, those are guys. Completely agree with you on every one of them. And Mark Texera, they're all very good players, and and they had great careers. Yes, but I think that group that I just said, they're not they're not in really the conversation for me. No, they're not. They're it, and I I completely agree with you on all of those guys not making the hall. Now I did leave now a guy that I'm taking a closer look at uh, that's uh, could have been on that list, but I haven't put him on that list yet. Is Jimmy Rollins? Uh, I'm not sure what to do about him yet. I'm taking a little closer look. I'm not gonna vote. I wouldn't. I'm not voting for him this year. But I'm not. But the problem is, he may not make the five percent and be on it next year. So we'll see. Right, uh, right. and that's something that voters. The two things voters have to keep in mind is you've got people who are going to be off the ballot and will go to the um, veterans committee if they don't make it. And then you have guys who, if they don't get 5% of the vote on their first try, they're going to be off the ballot forever. So. Right. But they, they'll still have a shot in the Veterans Committee as well. But yeah. they just won't be. I mean, like, there's a chance. Like our man Canerco. <laughs> yes. Did not get 5% of the vote, vote on his first try. So, you know, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, some really good players did, too. I think Lofton was first or second. He was he didn't make it. When that's, and if you take a closer look at Kenny Lofton's number, you're just like, that's crazy that he's not. Still yeah. on the ballot, you know. Uh, but, I mean, it happens, and it's historically it happens. What's interesting about this year is a lot of these guys we're talking about, and uh, spoiler alert, uh, I don't think Clemens and Bonds are going to make it. Uh, and so later this year in December, the, the next Veterans Committee, I think it's called Today's Game or something, which is from guys who started playing in 87 and beyond, are being considered so, or have played the bulk of their careers from '87 beyond. Yeah. Uh, so Bonds, Clemens, uh, they they both uh, think. I mean, the the prevailing theory is that they're going to be voted in by the committee once if if they don't get in voted by the writers, which they're not going to be. So, right, uh, that's interesting. Uh, they could be Hall of Famers not in January, but in December. <laughs> right. Which has never happened, so I, I think that's kind of. I might not. I should never is a pretty big blanket, but I don't think it's happened. So interesting. Right. So let's talk about somebody that's near and dear to your heart, and that is Ortiz, Big Poppy. Big Poppy, yeah. This I is, would say, in my opinion, yes, I would put Ortiz in the Hall of Fame. I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, but. Let's not just say that because obviously <laughs> other people out there right. don't agree. So, right. Well, he, uh, he had 541 lifetime home runs. Um, yeah, six, over 600 doubles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 1700 or 1768 RBIs. Yeah. And uh, both of those numbers compare favorably with Big Frank Thomas, who got in a few years ago. Yeah. So um, I would say, and he had a 55.3 lifetime war. So I would say, yeah, I mean, if you're going to compare him, not only if you're going to compare him to other um, people like him, like Frank Thomas, who are in the Hall of Fame, but just looking at the numbers, I mean, over 500 home runs is it nearly, that's almost nearly a guarantee of getting it. So, I mean, it used to be. Yeah. These things have changed with the steroid era. I mean, Sosa had 609 home runs. He's not getting in, you know, Palmero, guys like that. They're, I mean, Sheffield, even now, still on the ballot. He, he still has a shot, obviously, Bonds. I mean, so the steroid era has taken that 500 standard and shifted it. But 541 is a solid number. The problem with uh, Ortiz's election will be twofold. One is going to be that he was a DH, and some people won't vote for him because of that. And that's why his war is so – one of the reasons his – one of the main reasons his war is only 55-4 is because he was right. just a DH. Uh, so a lot of people – not a lot, but there are still some voters out there that won't vote for DHs, no matter how good they are. I mean, I think ar arguably D Ortiz was probably the best DH in baseball history. Right, and let's not probably. forget Edgar Martinez, he got in. 
he did get in and that helps and Thomas helps too, you know, and, uh, you know, I think uh, Ortiz probably played as much first base as Martinez played third base. Although Martinez played a, a, a good amount of third base early in his career, and yeah, Thomas yeah. played a, a very good amount of first base early in his career. I think they probably had more games played at positions than Ortiz did. Right. But you take in uh, to account, uh, so that's an argument against his uh, election. And, and then there's some people, and you know, no judgment here, but uh, that 2003. Suppose you know supposed to be anonymous test that was leaked to the the Times uh, that said he tested positive. Some people lump him in with all like Dan Shaughnessy, for example. And I hate to even mention his name, but uh, he he just lumps Ortiz in with all the other steroid users, Bonds, Clemens, uh, Sosa, and the like. And was that uh, was that the year that it was supposed to be anonymous and nobody's name was supposed to come out? Right, and so they got leaked out, uh, and that was before testing even began officially in MLB. And then, uh, and then the commissioner came out, I think, 2012 or something, and said, you know, that the likelihood that Ortiz's test was there was a lot of false positives, and you know, don't don't believe that Ortiz was necessarily one of the people that was positive uh, for for a banned steroid. You know, so anyway, there's some gray area in that uh you know the one thing i will say about that for the people that aren't going to vote for Ortiz because he's lumped in they want to lump him in with all those guys on that report or like guys like clement and bonds or sheffield who's admitted it or alex rodriguez or manny ramirez is that ortiz was tested probably more than any other player in major league baseball for the next 13 years 13 straight years never failed a test yeah. Not one. So, though, and again, I mean, this being the Trump United States of America these days, people are going to say, yeah, but there's, you know, he cheated to fit, to pass those tests. I don't know if you can cheat as many times as he did for 13 years, especially when guys are showing up at your doorstep at seven in the morning, you know, with a random surprise drug test. So, I mean, yeah, maybe he was a master of cheating and maybe I'm the captain of the good ship America that's going to Mars tomorrow, but I don't think that's true. And so, my, so since I don't think that's true and I choose not to believe that uh, scenario, I'm going to vote for him. I would put him on my ballot for sure. All right. Another guy that you just mentioned in that, uh, in that uh, previous discussion um, is Alex Rodriguez, who I also would vote into the Hall of Fame. I think yeah. statistically, again, I go, I'm a statistics guy. You know, I'm statistics and playing on the field guy. And uh, if, if you had the numbers, if you had, um, if you were dominant during your era as Alex Rodriguez was, um, I think you go with it all. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you here, at least uh, currently. You know, again, like I said, I'm not set in concrete on any of these, but the only line I, 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 I tend to draw, well, that's not even true. If there's some type of, clear cup standard it is you failed a drug test right and so a rod uh, has clearly or been suspended for using drugs right so in a rod's case it was the biogenesis mess where he was suspended for a year uh and that was his second uh, steroid offense and so him and uh, manny who by the way is probably a better hitter than a rod uh he failed two drug tests for steroids, Manny Ramirez. So I'm going to leave those two off for now. Uh, where are you on Manny, though? You must, you must, you have to vote for Manny if you're voting for A-Rod. No, I didn't have Manny on my... Uh, but I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't, you have to, you have to explain that one because they're in the same place. Well, maybe offensively, but I mean, he really wasn't a great defensive outfielder. And, um, and I don't think that he dominated the, I mean, he wasn't like, if, if you ask somebody to think about that time period and the great players, I don't know if somebody mentions Manny Ramirez, but they would definitely mention him. Well, I'll tell you that uh, most people will say Manny Ramirez was the best right-handed hitter of his era, which is the same era that Rodriguez played. All right. Uh, so, I mean, he had 555 home runs, and his OPS was 996 lifetime. His numbers... You know, some of his numbers are better than A-Rod. Now, now, granted, the only thing that you said that could possibly detract 
and makes sense is that he was not even close to the fielder A Rod was. But that's not a, enough of a, if you're going to vote for A Rod, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense not to vote for Ramirez. But I mean, listen, he don't make a lot of sense all the time. My ballot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, moving along. Who's uh, somebody else that you got on your ballot that you would have on your ballot? Uh, okay, so some of the, the – okay, so let's talk about shilling, right? Let's, the uh, Chillmeister. Gonna... Now, the, the only man. reason the only reason he didn't make it for me is because he's been on record as saying he doesn't want to be voted in by the Baseball Writers Association of America and – he um, and also, I think you mentioned at one point that it looks like because of that, he's not going to get in. So I didn't put him on my um, ballot only for that reason. Otherwise, I would have. But yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. The thing I like about the Hall of Fame is to me, and, and uh, one of the things I use is were you the best ever at something? You know, one of the top, top five ever in the history of baseball at something. If you were, then to me, you get into the Hall of Fame. I don't, you know, uh, so, you know, without extenuating circumstances, of course. So, Shill has, I believe, the if not the best, the second best walk to strikeout ratio in the history of baseball. I mean, he's right up there. It's incredible. And his war is the next highest for a pitcher that's not in the Hall of Fame. And he was 11-2 and two in the postseason. And, you know, and the numbers stand out. So without belaboring a point, I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. But yeah. to your point, he asked not to be voted in. He, he's down 17 votes. He missed being voted in by 17, 16 or 17 votes last year, and he's down 17 or, eight, or maybe 20 now votes. So he's, he's clearly not going to make it. He's actually in the negative. People are, dro are doing exactly what you said. He has to be out the ballot. And so – and I'll leave him off the ballot. Right. But interesting point. Again, he's one of those guys that people are saying, if he doesn't make it by the writers in January, they're going to clearly vote him in in December for the for the today's era ballot. Uh, so Clemens, Bonds, and Schilling. That should be a fun That should be a fun induction. Right. <laughs> Three and guys wonder, that were shunned by the writers that are in. I wonder if a lot of the writers are going to take that into consideration. Hey, you know, he's yeah, going to get I'm in. I'm sure they are. I mean, because some – yeah, no doubt. So that's that's where we're on Shill. He's obviously not going to make it, but I think clearly he's a Hall of Fame pitcher. I, and some people don't think he's a Hall of Fame pitcher just based on his career, but but uh, I'm saying I do for sure, yeah. All right. Um, Here's an interesting take. How about uh, – yeah, you go ahead. No, 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 no. I want to hear what you were going to say. I was going to just ask you about uh, Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent is on my ballot, yes. I have him on my ballot. I think he should be in. He, is. he um I had you picked. I had you pegged as a Jeff Kent guy. Yeah. I mean, he's got among Tell me why. Uh, well, he's got among the highest home run totals for a second baseman. Um even uh, if you were Yeah, if not the highest, I think. I think it might be the highest. Right, it may be. Yeah. I mean, he had a 55.5 war, 377 home runs. Sandberg is in the Hall of Fame. He had 282. So, yeah, I mean, to go to your point, if you were the best at something and he was the best at home runs for a second baseman or at least up in the top, you know, like the top five, um, I, I think uh, – and he was a dominant player throughout his the era that he played in. So I think, yeah, Jeff Kent gets in. I can't yeah, hear you. I would now. agree. I mean, it's. Uh, I, oh, you can't hear me? Can you? No, hear no, me no. I can now. I can now. Yeah. At first, I could. Okay. So, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Jeff Kent. I think he was uh, good enough at his position that he should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I don't think it was just the home runs. He was a very good hitter. Yeah. Yeah. For a, for a long enough time, he was not a good defender. So again, I'm a little surprised. Uh, you voted for him because, you know, you, you did not vote for Manny, and Manny was clearly better at his position than Kent was. But, you know, your inconsistencies, again, come through. <laughs> and I feel a little bit like we're 
for jumping on and off the crazy train, but you know, I, I I'm stuck on it anyway after the 49ers Cowboys game. So I, I yeah. welcome the company. So you might as well just keep riding it, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm on it anyway. So come on board, jump off when you need to. Right, right, right. So, um, all right, I got another. So else, now, I, you want, why don't you a, tell us who else is on your ballot? Let's do it. I've got, yes, two more guys that we did not discuss that are on my ballot. And one of those is a borderline player in many people's eyes, I believe, but I think he should get in, and that is Omar Vizcal. I think he should get into the Hall of Fame. Oh, my gosh. 45.6 lifetime war. Um, Aparicio, who is in the Hall of Fame, had a 55.8. And Rizzuto, who is also in the Hall of Fame, only had a 42.2. So, and Vizquel was one of the best defensive, if not the best defensive shortstop um, ever to play the game. So I am going to say, yes, Vizquel should be in the Hall of Fame. I'm going to leave him off my ballot for now. Especially <laughs> this year, because he's in that, in a hot pot, hot pot of boiling water for beating up somebody, some woman, uh, it might be his wife, I can't remember, but it was, mm. the allegations are nasty. And to me, if you're going to keep shilling off the ballot for just saying nasty stuff, then people actually doing nasty stuff probably should be left off the ballot, uh, or at least not get your vote. But his actual statistic, crens- crens- uh, <laughs> sorry, credentials are, uh, Interesting. I, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from, and I see your approach to the Hall of Fame is kind of uh, who's in, and how do, how does the moder- how does this particular person compare to who's in? Mm-hmm. Now, you know, obviously, a lot of people don't think Aparicio or Rizzuto belong in the Hall of Fame. That's so true. that's why the Hall of Fame is so interesting because you, when you compare him to two people who don't actually belong there but got in, <laughs> then he's you know maybe he's not going to get in. I, I mean, I don't know. It's a false I have no problem with Rizzuto and Apparition <laughs> being. <laughs> I mean, but I'm, anyway, I don't want to spend more time on this spell than necessary. I, I, I'm not voting for him. And, but like Rollins, I'll certainly, I'm going to keep him in mind. We'll see. Okay. The last guy I've got Who's on the other my guy? Hall is Scotty Rowland. I think Scotty oh, Rowland at the end of the yeah. Hall of Fame. Yes. Uh, now we're yeah. talking... 70.1 lifetime war, 316 home runs. So, yeah, I think he should get it. I agree. I, I, I uh, man, and this is a, this is almost a Dwight Evans kind of thing to me. Like, why is Scott Rowland not in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. I mean, he was a, a superior defend, defensive third baseman. And the Hall of Fame traditionally just does not recognize third baseman unless, you know, you hit 548 home runs like Michael Jack Schmidt or something. But, Right. I think Roland was an exceptional third baseman, probably the one of the, if not the best of his era again. And uh, I mean, A-Rod flipped back and forth between third and short. But uh, I mean, I think Roland's a Hall of Famer. His defense was, puts him over the top to me. Let's just put it that yeah. way. His offensive numbers, I mean, he, he only has great defensive third baseman too. Yeah. yeah, he only has 2,077 hits, which is really low for a Hall of Famer. But the uh, power, the RBIs, the defense... Um, yeah, I just, when I think, when I think of Scott Rowan, I think, you know what, Hall of Famer, third baseman, Hall of Famer. And some people don't, and a lot of people, obviously a lot of people don't, although he's, he's at about 69% this year. So he's up, uh, he's up quite a bit, but uh, I would vote for him. He's on my list for sure. All right. So I'm just going to, I'm going to quickly recap mine because we're done with mine. So I'm going to seven dudes. My seven dudes are Bonds, Clemens, Ortiz. Alex Rodriguez, Vizquel, Jeff Kent, and Roland. And would have been Schilling uh, in a perfect world if he had been a regular guy that didn't say he didn't want to be in and didn't raise a hubbub and and all that stuff. But um, in a perfect world, Schilling would have. I just left him off because he said he doesn't want to be out. Right. And so that's it. Yeah. Okay. So... Let's see. That leaves some people to talk about. Uh, Let's see who we haven't dug into a little bit. Andrew Jones is one guy we haven't talked about. 
uh, I think Tim Lincecum probably was in that list. I might not have mentioned it, but he would be on that list of people that were close. He certainly had some great years, but I would not vote for him. Right. Andy Pettit, we didn't talk about. Uh, Gary Sheffield, we didn't talk about. So those are the three. Those are three guys that we need to talk about a little bit. What What do you think of those three? The, let's take the two batters first: Andrew Jones and Sheffield. Because think, Jones, to me, is pretty close to being in the same company as Roland. Yeah, I mean, I mean he was a, probably he was an excellent defensive center fielder. Absolutely, an excellent yeah. defensive center fielder. Um, but yeah, I'm. For me, he just doesn't quite get there. I mean, he's very close, um, but he just doesn't quite make it um, in my book. So, I mean. I'm, I'm just checking, rechecking some of his numbers. Yeah, I don't his, have his numbers right now. His down. career OPS is 823. So, his, I mean, his career bad average is 254, which yeah. bad average isn't supposed to be everything anymore. It's nothing really. It's like wins. They're both kind of irrelevant. But even his, uh, I mean, so his OPS is, I mean, his on base for a 254 average is decent considering it's about 73 points, 83 points higher. Than his batting average at 337. So he walked a lot. He stole 152 bases. I mean, there's a there's a lot of good things about him. 434 home runs is not bad for he hit, you know. I mean, it, it's another guy I think I'm gonna put him with Rollins a little bit, uh, and just kind of think about him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, he's somebody I would in you know, in um subsequent years I might. Oh, and there's another guy we didn't talk about, too. This is another batter we, we probably should even talk about before. First of all, let, let's just finish up with Sheffield. What did you think about? What's what's uh, holding you back on Sheffield? Because he's got – Sheffield's got, what, 500 and – how many home runs does Sheffield have? 570? 500 and mm. – did he get over 600? No, Sheffield didn't get over 600, right? I don't know. All right, well, talk about Sheffield a little bit why you didn't vote for him. I just, uh, well, really, to be honest with you, I didn't do a lot of research into Sheffield, but um, he just didn't, to me, um, he was all offense, no defense. Um, just, um, I don't know. He just doesn't quite make it, doesn't rise to the level for me. Um, 509 career home runs. So that's that reaches your magic number that you talked about. Yeah, that's true. That is true. It's hard because uh, some people – make a case for him that some of his uh, stats, including war, I believe, are obviously a little bit better than Ortiz's. So it's an interesting comparison. And again, I think it comes down to perception. Obviously, he admitted using the cream or the clear at one point, uh, you know, saying he didn't know he was using it. I, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe that's affecting his candidacy a bit too. I didn't put him on my list. Uh, it's hard keeping guys like Sosa and Sheffield with, you know, 600 and yeah. Over 600 home runs for one guy and over 500 for another. But uh, obviously with Sosa, it's a cork bat, steroid kind of thing. And then with – Yeah, Sosa. I mean, and Sosa was really – I mean, he was like all home runs. That was yeah. – if you're going yeah, to put him a, in, you were going to put him in just solely on home runs. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, no doubt. And uh, and I, and also, I think, you know, McGuire didn't get in. Yeah, and so, McGuire the same yeah. thing. Well, why would you put Sosa or Sheffield in? I mean, similar – kind of arguments. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're going to put A-Rod in, then I, I suppose you've got to let all those guys in. That's what that – I don't know. But it's, it's you know, it's just a, it's an uncomfortable kind of conversation to have because everyone's making their own different assumptions and different uh, – kind of setting different standards for who they're going to vote in based on what they know about steroids and one-trick ponies and, yeah. you know. So – and then, but uh, one of the cases, two of the stronger cases. Oh well, first let's talk about Andy Pettit. How many, you know, because he's certainly a guy that needs to be looked at, and you know, he's favorable, if obviously favorable, if not better than Mark Burley, right? Uh, he maybe was better than Mark Burley, but still, I don't think for me um, rises to the standard being because you had Burley really close. Yes, very good. I did, and and I would I would certainly have Pettit close, and he would be somebody I might take a look at in subsequent years. But um, for 
for me. I mean, again, to me, like we were talking about Burley. Burley's career ERA was 381. Pettis is 385. Burley's career whip was 1.28, and Pettis was 1.35. So, I mean, now Pettit won 256 games, uh, which is more than 218 of Burley. Burley won 218, we said, right? Um, he won uh, 214. 14. So, I mean, in a lot of – in the you know, in a lot of ways, uh, Burley was a little bit better than Pettit, but they're both kind of similar, except for Pettit won 32 more games. Uh, right, and probably more postseason games, too. Yeah, and then and then that's, of course, and, pl- and pitched two more years, and then he won more, because he pitched more postseason games, for certainly. Although Burley pitched in a, a good amount, I imagine. But uh, I left Pettit off my ballot. I'm not sure what he did with Clemens. Obviously, he admitted to using steroids, uh, yeah. but he never came out and, and said, you know, I, the thing I don't like about Pettit is if you did steroids with Clemens, just come out and say it. Why do you have to be that kind of person that falls on the sword for Clemens? You know, I don't understand it. But, I mean, I guess if you were in trouble and and somebody came to me and tried to get me to tell somebody I knew something incriminating about you, I probably wouldn't do it, right? So right. I guess I'd have your back, just like Pettit's trying to have Clemens. But it's a it's an interesting situation. And if I think, I think you know, we got to give a lot of consideration to Burley but if we're going to give a lot of consideration to Pettit, you know. Because, right. again, wins don't. 256, 28, 214, you know, and Pettit pitched two more years. So, I mean, the wins, wins are not – everything you look at, uh, although certainly they're important. I mean, they have to, they have to be in some way. So, yeah, but I didn't vote for Pettit either. All right. All right. So Todd Helton. You, you uh, got yeah. What about Todd Helton? Didn't you like, and uh, I, and I I'm, guessing, is, I'm guessing I'm, it's a five letter word, right? Uh, yeah. Cores. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's the argument you're going to see. Uh, and, and probably, I mean, I didn't look at it, but I would guess his splits at Coors as opposed to on the road were vastly different. Well, I mean, they always are, right? I mean, I'm yeah. sure he wasn't the exception to the rule. Larry Walker had the same problem, which is why he was on a ballot for 10 years. Larry Walker. Oh. And Larry Walker was good. But I think we can – Larry Walker was probably slightly better defensively and right than – Oh, Helton yeah. was a first, but Helton was a very – He was, a, he was a, not only a great defensive outfielder, but had a great arm, too. Yeah. I mean, but so did Dwight Evans. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Right. <laughs> Full circle. Full circle. <laughs> right. Uh, it always comes back to Dwight Evans. Yeah. I'm gonna, I, have Hel- I have Helton on my ballot. I like Helton. And uh, I like his numbers, and I don't particularly – give a hoots where you hit the ball. I mean, if Walker's in the Hall of Fame, Helton's in the Hall of Fame to me. He's He he had incredible years. His, OP, his career OPS is 953, which is screams Hall of Fame. His war, everything about Helton, I like. Uh, he needs to be in the Hall of Fame is my... Okay. Is my, my vote. He gets my vote. So I guess I'm at seven guys solidly. And that just leaves one guy... I left this guy for last because I knew you wouldn't talk about him. You wouldn't put him on your ballot. And and I didn't think you'd even remember him. And he's my my pet. He's my Dwight Evans of 2022. Mm-hmm. And I think this guy needs to be in the Hall of Fame. And, I, and I'm just kind of embarrassed that he's not. You know, and he's got about three more years. Two, maybe three more years after this on the ballot. Okay. And that guy is my man. Left-handed superstar closer, Billy Wagner. Billy Wagner. Billy freaking Wagner. I don't know what is holding people back on this guy. Well, actually, I mean, I do because I read stuff. Well, one thing is that he's a reliever. Relievers. Right. Well, that's the first thing. That's the most obvious thing. I mean, he's a reliever. Uh, He's got the – and secondly, his his innings pitched. He pitched 16 years in the majors, but only 900 and – I'm going to say 30 innings pitched, right? And some people think for some reason, somebody's head decided that 930 innings is not enough to be in the Hall of Fame. Somebody just said, hey. And so that narrative was created. 
Like, oh, yeah. Listen, if you're a Hall of Fame pitcher for 930 innings, I don't care that it wasn't 1,230 innings. You're a Hall of Fame pitcher. 930 innings is more than enough for me to say, yes, you're in the Hall of Fame. The guy has – what is the strikeout to innings pitch record? If he, if he's, I think he's the best in baseball, uh, one of the top – relievers ever in strikeout strikeouts to any pitch ratio i think it's yeah, I think that it's some it's some insane number something that hurts him like if you compare him to like Suter and gossage who are in the hall of fame Suter and gossage would come in and pitch three innings right right billy wagner never did that so wait but whoa 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 whoa, whoa. you can't hold that against billy wagner because well, he he can't be and held he, accountable for what era he pitched in and what year he was born and the way baseball was played when he played it. That he had no control over any of that. He can only control how good was he in the way the game was played when he played it. That's why I don't get any, you know, and what and what he did was phenomenal. I mean, be, he has the six most saves in baseball history. Right, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out what a writer who would leave him off the ballot is probably thinking is that, yeah, yes, well, well. Um, Suter and Gossage were in, but they would come in and they would pitch three innings at the end of the game and completely close the game out with three. But innings. again, they pitched in the 70s. Yeah. When guys were routinely pitching three innings and, you know, getting wins and saves. And yeah, it was just a way a different use then. Mariano's in the Hall of Fame. He didn't spend his career pitching two or three innings. And Wagner has some pretty yeah. comparable numbers to Rivera. You have to look at it very closely, but his obviously his strikeout in his pitch is better than Rivera. Uh, you know, he didn't he didn't get the acclaim that Rivera did, and he didn't pitch the any the same amount of innings that he did. But he's got a lifetime ERA of two point three one. His WHIP, his lifetime WHIP, is 0.99, For goodness sakes, I mean, this is heady stuff, man. This guy was the best at his position. You know, Rivera was obviously the best, but below that, to me, Wagner, in the time he pitched from 1995 to 2010, was the best, you know, behind Rivera, obviously. So I, I don't understand. I just uh, – he, he's ticking up a little bit. I think he's picked up uh, 10 or 11 votes at this point this year, but he's still hovering around 48%, which is not bad, but uh, with only three years on the ballot, I'm just hoping – more yeah, writers take another look I at think him if, because... if he he would strike me as the type of guy maybe that if he went to the veterans committee he would have he wouldn't have as good a chance as you know people like Bonds and Clemens and um, you know, Sheffield or whatever. Um, so we'll we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, well, we will see what happens. Hopefully, you know, as long as you and I are around. That's true. You don't start walking on the giant more. We might not see what happens. <laughs> don't. You're up. <laughs> yeah. So Anyway, that wraps up. That, so he's on my ballot. So that's my eight. I'll just go right down them one more time. Bonds, Clemens, Ortiz, Kent, Roland, Helton, Wagner. Those are my guys. Schilling would definitely have been on my list if two reasons. One, I know he's not going to make it. And two, he asked off. So, you know, fine. But to me, Schill's a hot. All famer and I and uh, you know you know what I'll just throw him on my ballot and make it nine because he is a Hall of Famer in my book and it doesn't matter to me that he asked off uh, so make it nine for me I'll put Shill on my ballot because he's he's a Hall of Famer there's no All doubt right. in my mind. <clears throat> All right. So I got nine, you got seven, but uh, that's you know right. that is right. It's not bad actually because I'm a big Hall guy and and you're kind of more a little not you're not a small Hall but you're a medium Hall guy. Right. And for anybody out there who's watching this show, one book I would highly recommend is Bill James's Whatever Happened to the Hall of Fame. Very good. Book. Not that Bill James needs a plug on this show, but yeah, we'll give it to him. <laughs> no, he's, probably, he he's probably sitting in his basement right now applauding the, the free plug that you just gave his book. <laughs> and it's a good book. Also, check out Jay Jaffe's work. You know, he's also very good on no, no. and Brian Kenny too if you like Brian Kenny Brian Kenny who says you should just get rid of ERA right and wins things like that batting average gone I mean I don't know if they're that bad that they need to be stricken but 
you know, if you want to look at other stuff to evaluate your players, you're free to. You let the people who want to look at batting average look at it. You know, it's interesting. One of the guys, the year that um, um, year that I went to uh, opening day with Tom Bunch when it was in New York City. Tom Bunch. The 50th annual, the 50th annual, um, you know, uh, of dramatic anniversary. One of the guys, um, one of the guys that said he'd been playing um, uh, Stratomatic baseball his whole life said something very interesting. He was like, you know, I would always gather these guys that had high batting averages, but yet my team never won, won the league. And I was like, why is that? Why do I have all these guys that lead in batting average and I'm never winning the league? And he real he came to realize it was because these guys didn't – their on-base percentage wasn't that much higher than their batting Right. Average. A lot of guys hit 338 and had an on-base of 348, which isn't going to win you a lot of pennants. Right. And so – or or they would hit, you know, 290 with an on-base of 310. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. So – and then he realized – I'm not winning because these other guys that are winning the league have guys with high on base percentages and a lot of walks. That's right. And then once he realized that, he was able to adjust his thinking and, uh, and I suppose I would assume win more games. Well, you know, you know where that argument proves, don't you? What? That Dwight Evans belongs in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Listen. he had. Low Nobody. batting averages, but high high on base. Look at his on base. We got to get him in the hall. <laughs> Nobody is denying that, that Dewey Dwight Evans belongs in the hall. Somebody is because he's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> a, bunch, a bunch of somebody's. <laughs> but a few people. We're not two of them. But right. We are not two of them. No. All right. So, well, that yeah. is going to conclude my discussion with Chris Dufour on the Hall of Fame. Leave your comments below. Always interested to hear what everybody else thinks. But that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z for Chris Dufour. Peace. Signing off. <laughs>